friends, I am back. Mr. Jiggs, your grade five, six pastor here at South Street Church. Welcome to Equip. Equip is a place where we learn more about God and help you apply those learning in your daily walk with Jesus. Last week, we talked about God is worthy of our thanksgiving. Giving thanks is the way we learn and show others that God is involved in our world and in our lives. Now, this week, we will talk about trust. God is worthy of our trust. In Psalm 62, David cries out to God as his protector and provider. As he remembers God's promises of hope producing salvation, David calls all people to put their trust in God instead of falling into the trap of finding their security and rest in something or someone else. Ultimately, God invites us to trust Him because He has good things in store for those who will walk with Him in obedience. Our trust in God ultimately blesses Him, blesses us, and blesses others. Did you know that when David was hiding in the wilderness strongholds, it was in the same area where the famous fortress of Masada was located? We don't know for sure if Masada was one of his hiding places, but we get a hint in Psalm 18 too, where David cries out to God in praise for his deliverance. He says, the Lord is my rock, my fortress, and my deliverer. You see, we can experience major challenges in our faith journey, especially when we are away from Christian influences, but we can always put our trust in God. I am sure you want to hear more about it. So let's continue our series study for week three, God is worthy of our trust. Enjoy and see you all afterward.
Trust, a simple word that means much. Five letters to dictate your whole direction. Someone to fully lean on more than just a crutch. Putting your hope in a single important selection. What one person or idea can be suited for such affection? If I'm to trust God with my entire life, I want to know who I'm putting my faith in. Who is he? Can he handle my future, my past? 
my strife? What will I do if everything caves in? God, are you worthy of all my trust? If I want to trust you, I need to know you. I must be honest, be vulnerable, be with you. I must. Your word will always convince me that you are faithful, good, and just. That above all, you are worthy. and you alone can I place my trust. So I let it all go and allow your strength to carry me. I rise above the fear below. And when I trust you, I am free. everyone welcome to equip we are so glad that you are here I'm mr. Jiggs and I'm mr. Matt well today we are going to continue our study of the book of Psalms exploring the amazing truth that runs through the entire book of Psalms that God is worthy it's been a while since we have been together so mr. Matt is going to do a very quick recap yep that's right so on week one we learned that God is worthy and that means that God has great value in our lives and deserves our attention our praise but also mm -hmm. our worship God is worthy for three different reasons he is the creator of all things that's right he sees and he knows us but also he saves us from our mm -hmm. sin then in week two, we learned that God is worthy of our thanksgiving. And we learned from King David's life that God is worthy of our thanksgiving in good times, but also in, in bad, bad times. And we can do three different things to grow thanksgiving in our lives. Number one, we can remember the truth about who God is. Number two, invite God into each moment of our lives. And then number three, show your thankfulness. All right, so today we are going to explore another psalm of King David where we see our next important truth. Mm -hmm. God is worthy of our trusts. That's right. So I'm going to ask you, uh, Jigs, a super important question. You ready? Okay. Do you trust me? Yes, of course I trust you. Do you, do you really trust me? Yes, I do. Okay. Do you trust me uh, holding on to a big bag of water like this? That's because I trust you, but I don't think I can trust that bag of water. You sure? Uh, what about do you trust me uh, with this big bag of water holding it over top of your... Oh. Uh, well, I trust you much, but I'm not really, really sure about that thing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, let's just see what happens if I take this bag, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna poke holes through the bag over top of your head, and hopefully you will see goosebumps. how this works. Oh, okay, ready? Oh, it's, I, I already punctured it. Oh, okay, here we go. Here we go, ready? Uh, maybe we'll only do one, but ready? One, two, three. All right, here we go. Number two. Here we go. You're doing great. You're doing great. How do you feel? Well, I'm, I think I'm okay. <laughs> There's no water out in there yet. And so. number three. <laughs> this is awesome. And number four. Oh, I got a, I got a leak. Okay, you know what? It'll be just fine. So, how did that go for you, Mr. Jiggs? Well, I think it's okay. It's all good. Well, there you go. I didn't get wet so far, so I was scared that the bag was going to explore after each pencil. Mm -hmm. And so was I. I'm actually glad that that worked because I was actually surprised it worked because I didn't even practice Seriously? it before today. <laughs> but you know, trusting me through this experiment uh, probably didn't make sense, especially when you when you had to believe me. You had to believe me at my word, and I really had no idea what was going to happen today. Mm -hmm. But the same is true with God. Trusting God can feel like you're holding a bag of water with pencils over your head, and the pencils keep going through it, and you're trusting that the bag is not going to leak. 
Yeah, that is right. You told me it would be okay, but I really didn't know what was going to happen. No, you didn't. <laughs> because I trusted you, I knew that there was a good chance something bad is not going to happen. Mm -hmm. Well, and you know what? That is how King David felt at times when he had to trust God mm -hmm. through a lot of difficult situations. In Psalm 62, we read about how David was singing and shouting from the rooftops that God was deserving but also worthy of our trust. Mm -hmm. So what was it that made King David believe that God is trustworthy? Well, there are three reasons we see in Psalm 62 of why God is worthy of our trust. Mm -hmm. Number one, God is the great protector. In Psalm 62 too, we read this. It is surely true that he is my rock. Mm -hmm. He is the God who saves me. He is like a fort to me. I will always be secure. That is a pretty descriptive way to describe God, eh? Right. He is like a rock, the one who saves. He's a fort. Now, mm -hmm. fortresses were really important in biblical times. They provided safety and security from enemies. That's right. They provided hope when you're looking into the distance and you saw a fortress, hope for those that were walking towards it, but also rest for those that were inside it. Mm -hmm. Now, when you think about David's story, it makes total sense why he called God his fort. Because even though David was God's chosen king, it didn't mean that his life was easy. That's right. Remember some things that happened in David's life? Just remember with me really quick. He was the target of assassination attempts. He mm -hmm. was chased from the throne by his own son who wanted his throne. He lived in hidden caves because people wanted to kill him. Yes. Like all the time. He made poor decisions with Bathsheba. Now, when we think about Israel, the nation that God had said he would be leading as king, the nation of Israel was always dealing with something. They were surrounded by enemies. They were often oppressed or enslaved, or they were occupied, or they were exiled. Mm. The promise of a mighty kingdom seemed always just out of reach for the people of Israel. And David had moments where he got worried about people wanting him off the throne and wanting to hurt him. But instead of resting in his own strength, he rested in God, right. which was That's his rock. Beautiful. And you will notice that David doesn't say that God is the rock. Mm -hmm. He says that God is my rock. Mm -hmm. And he reminds us that God is personal. He is close. He is loyal. He keeps his promises. He loves you and me deeply. And he acts on behalf of those who love him. And God provides and he protects. He is faithful even with things are, you know, when they're not going well around us. He said that he will never leave us. Amen. When we're nervous Amen. about a test, when we get worried about our parents fighting, when we feel like we're alone or when others are upset with us, we can trust God because he will protect us. God hasn't changed. He is our rock. He is our fortress who will never, ever be shaken and he will always be our refuge. All right. Well, the second reason why God is worthy of our trust is... God is a good provider. Mm -hmm. In verse 5 and 6, we read, Yes, I must find my rest in God. He is the God who gives me hope. It is surely true that He is my rock and the God who saves me. He is like a fort to me, so I will always be secure. Yeah. David says that he finds rest in God. David was able to rest because he knew, he knew that he would be rescued from his enemies, not by any battle or mighty sword that he would hold. Mm -hmm. It was God who would fight for him. God is the one who provided rescue plan. God is David's salvation. When you know that someone is coming to fight for you and rescue you, that brings confidence. Mm -hmm. But it also brings hope. David was filled with hope that his enemies would not destroy him. Yep. When you feel like things couldn't, you know, get any worse. When you feel like you are all alone. When something happens and you're wondering why it is happening. You can have the same confidence David had by remembering God is for you. He is with you and he provides for you. Mm -hmm. He is your salvation. The one who will rescue you. I have a question for you to answer in your group. When do you find it most difficult to trust God? Mm. Take a few minutes to answer that question and we will start again shortly.
Welcome back. Thanks for sharing. Remember, even when we face difficult situations or moments in life, we can trust God because God is a good protector. God is a good provider. That's right. And finally, number three, the reason why we can trust God is because God doesn't fail. In mm -hmm. verse 8 and 10, we read, Trust in Him at all times, you people. Tell Him all your troubles. God is our place of safety. Don't trust in money you've taken from others. Mm -hmm. Don't put false hope in things you've stolen. Even if your riches grow, don't put your trust in them. In this verse, David is saying that we sometimes put our trust in things mm -hmm. and in other people. We put our trust that our money is going to save us, that our strength is going to save us, our brains are going to save us, or that person will save us. But David says, that's actually a trap. We can't find rest in money and possessions and success or even our own strength. Those are false protectors. That's right. The only place we will find safety and security and rest is in God. Because outside of God, there is no other rock or mm -hmm. refuge or fortress that can provide the salvation or rescue that you and I need. When we let go of false protectors and focus on the rock and the fortress and refuge of Jesus, we will know true rest and what that feels like no matter the circumstance we face. I love that David says at the beginning of verse 8, he says this, trust in him at all times. Not some of the time or when you feel like it. Mm -hmm. all, times. all times. He invites us to trust him in all those things because he is faithful and he can be trusted. He has proven that all through time and he will never ever stop proving that now or ever. At the beginning, I held a bag of water yeah. over your head, Mr. Jiggs. And you know, there's all those holes in it, right? And, and you have to trust me, Mr. Jiggs, uh, that the water wouldn't fall on you. And sometimes we can feel like we have a bag over our own heads and it's getting poked with holes. Hmm. There's friends moving away. Family members are getting sick. Maybe we have pets, pets that are passing away. Yes. There's lots of fighting in your house. Maybe you do horrible on a subject like math or science or whatever it might be. And maybe even it's just like feels like it's a pandemic, right? Pandemics are happening around us and we're like wondering what is going on? All these holes are filling up my life. Those things definitely hurt and they're not fun. But we can trust God Amen. even when it seems like things are going horribly wrong. He loves and cares for you. You don't need to worry about that bag of water because you know the one who is holding the bag. He is never going to let you down. Mm -hmm. He never fails and he desires for us to come to him during all the things that we face. God is worthy of our trust. But we can be tempted as we go through life to put our trust in many things other than God. Mm -hmm. Like putting our trust in person, money, possession, being popular, following the rules perfectly, how we look, and a bunch of other things. Mm -hmm. But God wants us to leave those things, abandon them, and have courage and strength to trust only in Him, in God, because He will never fail. That's right. We are going to take a few moments and ask God to search our hearts and identify things that we have been putting our trust in other than God. If anything comes to mind, ask God to forgive you for putting your trust in something temporary and invite Him to be the rock and fortress you need and dedicate your life to trusting Him through all you face. The music, the music is going to play. Let's pray quietly and then I will close us. Let's pray together. God, Today, we praise and thank you for being worthy. We have seen today that you are worthy of our trust more than any person, more than any money we can save or anything we can buy. I pray that you will give us courage and strength to continue to walk in that freedom, in that peace and rest that you provide us, our rock and fortress. May we trust you in all things now and in the future. For I pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you all for being here today. And we are looking forward to seeing you again next week. Sure. Yeah, see you guys then. Bye. Bye.